Dean, did, did, you, uh, did you look at the number of positive stories, basically saying this is good, let's jump no, on the bandwagon? No, I didn't look, at, look for cheerleading stories, but I came across them by accident. We included them. We, we were looking for, uh, you know, for uh, stories that we defined as warnings, and the ones we defined were uh, uh, direct investigations of powerful lenders and powerful Wall Street firms. But when you do that, you find all sorts of stuff. And I, I want to say it's very cool to look back at this coverage and see just sort of how it was done and the way the, the, the patterns. But and yeah, you'll see that. And I you could do an interesting study on on um, on uh, the cheerleader stuff, the rah rah stuff. But I, th I think you'd be surprised. I don't think you're going to find all that much of it. But I, but I think, think that's good news for the press. I mean, yeah, that's the no, other that's balance right. to, to what you're credit, saying. Credit credit where it's due. I, I just don't think. Yeah, there were a few in there. Uh, mor mortgage slump, bring it on, countrywide plans to expand so and so. Um, so, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but that, I, I wouldn't, if, if, if we're looking for, for problems, I, I don't think that's the one. Oops. Sorry, someone's right there. All right, from the left, I'm not sure that's a political statement or not. Um, <laughs> Kevin Hall with McClatchy Newspapers. I wanted to second what Mimi said. I think she's absolutely right. There's a famous saying, investors chase past returns, and I think the, the, the frenzy atmosphere with profits is certainly a part of the story. I wanted to hone in on what Alan said and ask, uh, it's, it's convenient to hit CNBC. Larry Kudlow, my personal uh, guy, gets on my nerves the most uh, yeah. in terms of cheerleaders. Uh, but Bloomberg, uh, your former employer, <coughs> certainly uh, should be uh, asked some questions. I'm, I'm curious if some of the financial writers, uh, I know we have some Bloomberg guys here, might want to step up and ask whether they ask the questions when Bear Stearns, I mean, read House of Cards and get a sense of up until the very end, the kind of money pumping into Bear Stearns with nobody asking anything about the leverage. And I'm wondering to what degree did the financial wires, by virtue of being somewhat incestuous with who they cover, uh, perpetuate this problem? Or further this problem more than it otherwise may have been the case. Well, I look, since you mentioned me, let me talk about Bloomberg and a, and a structural issue there. One of its great strengths and great weaknesses at the same time is that the rule there is you're not supposed to inject any opinion. In fact, uh, although it's changed in the last couple of months, uh, when Matt Winker was running the entire place and, and hadn't lost broadcasting in the internet, you weren't allowed to use adjectives or adverbs. Uh, that's not such a bad rule, but it meant everything was very dry, very straight ahead, and uh, there wasn't a lot of analysis. So even when Bloomberg turned up a lot of good facts on Bear Stearns, for instance, the, the flavor, the interpretation that a good story by the New York Times or the Wall Street Journal or the LA Times or Jane or anybody else might include would be missing. So. Um, I don't know how to go further than that. I'm, I'm not sure that Bear Stearns, everything got swept up all at once. And there were so many different complex balls in the air that it was hard to keep track of, is what I would say. There, there isn't a, a, a sort of broad-based Bloomberg uh, d defender here, but I would say that, well, I did not, um, because we didn't have access to the wire, um, uh, so I did not uh, see their wire uh, re regularly, but their magazine, they did investigative pieces that were really very strong, going back um, three or f at least three or four years. So, um, uh, I would agree with that. The, yeah. ma the magazine did did stuff. I can't I can't speak to the I, I can't speak to the wire. Alan, hi, I'm Alan Sloan from Fortune, and my specialty is fact-based columns in a language approaching English that enrage people, preferably my management. <laughs> but I've lived to tell the tale, and you know, Dean, I'm I'm by journalistic standards, a quant, but I obviously have a problem here because you're talking about the conclusions of your study and I haven't seen the study. But j just for starters, what are the nine publications? Uh, sure, um, Wall Street Journal, New York Times, uh, Washington Post, Financial Times, Business Week, Forbes, Fortune, is that nine? I mean, it's close. Yeah. I, I mean, I wasn't counting, but I still have and, figures. Uh, we, uh, some are easy to search, easier to search than others, but we tried to fill in the gaps. And you also had some from LA Times, didn't you? Yes, of course, sorry. Right. LA all, Times, too. I'm sorry, and is your position 
since again, I haven't seen the study or right. any of this. We'll have but, a chance to. No, no, but I just, I just want to ask one question. Is your position that these nine publications did not meet whatever your standards were for warning by the middle of 2007 that what had started as a bunch of what I call junk mortgages um, was going to morph into, a, into something that started a worldwide recession and was threatening to, to take down the world's financial system. Is, is that what you think they should have written by the middle of 2007? I'm sorry, what, I didn't quite. OK. Is your position, because you said, gee, there were a lot of warnings and you know, a right, lot right, of right. stuff. Right, right, right. Yes, yes, I see. I so see when, when the press fell down, was it by not saying that the problems that had started as, well, I'll call them subprime mortgages right, just right, to keep right. you happy, I see, I see, I see. Would, would morph into no, a, right. a right, worldwide right. economic slowdown and, and challenging the world's financial system? That, that's a great question and very important. And it's interesting. I mean, find myself in the uh, other side of the table with great journalists like Larry and, and Alan. Um, no, um, and it's a very important point, I think, to think about because I think there's a, a great uh, a, a misperception that um, there's an expectation by me or someone else that, um, that uh, financial journalists are in the prediction or soothsaying business, and I, I find that that's, that's not the expectation. I don't think it should be, um, and I address this in my, in my piece. No, I think that what I'm trying to get at with this piece is that what was missing were uh, the fact that essentially you had an industry that had turned uh, predatory, that be lenders, and they were backed by specific actors that underwrote the whole thing. So what I'm what I'm saying is, is um, we're looking for what we what the public responds to. I believe. Are um, you know, regulators are a whole other story, and and uh, I would say that in 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 addressing that one thing to me though is you don't you don't write for regulators, so th that's you know and whether they do or don't, that's something to keep in mind. What I'm what I'm saying is that um, we're, 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 we were looking at an in, of, of a period of of what I what I believe was institutionalized corruption in the mortgage lending business and made possible by Wall Street actors. And what, what I'm saying is, is investigations that contain that kind of headline risk for those out outfits, Countrywide, IndyMac, uh, New Century, AmeriQuest, uh, Lehman Bear Merrill, um, those were, that was sort of the watchdog that, that did embark. And you mentioned that great piece by Diana and Lowell Bergman. That piece was revisited in June of 2007 by the journal. Dead bomb, Lehman does so, is back. He's a, a deep, it's basically neck deep, is what's but. But we're talking about a period when those, th those were the things you want, you, you'd, you'd want to see, uh, particularly 04 through, through, through 06. That's the thesis. All right. Since, since you know, this is not a debate, and I don't want to hog the sure, microphone, no, it's fine. Uh, we'll, we'll, yeah, finish, fine we'll finish this later, but obviously not now. <laughs> Thank you. You're going to go outside? <laughs> Try to be polite. If you want me to be myself, I'll do that. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I would say uh, rather than talking, you know, debating something you haven't had a chance to even deal with, read. Uh, we're gonna, I'm going to be giving a talk on it, Columbia. I'll send it out to the Cebu list uh, May 5th. Small classroom, so don't, you know, but we'll have a larger conference in June. I'll give you word, everyone will have a chance to talk about it. It won't be, the conference in June is not going to be about this piece. It's going to be about a, a, a broader topic called uh, what is financial journalism for? So plug, I'll plug for that. But, but at that point, Alan and anyone else can can uh, can come and and uh, and agree with me, as I'm sure he will when it gets there.